I will conclude uh, our talks about hemodynamics in mechanical ventilation about talking special about talking about special population of patients those with severe pulmonary hypertension and RV failure right ventricular failure as we know by now mechanical ventilation decrease RV preload and increase RV after load in patients with severe pulmonary hypertension RV failure they are already preload dependent so mechanical ventilation will lead to decrease in this preload and also will need to decrease in the RV after load and both will make pulmonary hypertension and RV failure worse on the other hand hypoxia can lead to pulmonary vasoconstriction which will increase RV after load and make things worse so rule of thumbs try to avoid placing this population of patient on mechanical ventilation because they don't do well the patient that we've had with this problem mechanical ventilation most of them did not survive it because all these hemodynamic effects but again you don't want them to be hypoxic so if you need to intubate them and put them on mechanical ventilation to correct hypoxia go for it but you need to pay attention to the preload preload issues and afterload issue and these people usually manage by pulmonary and critical care uh, or intensivist because sometimes they need vasodilator to help decrease the afterload here again tried by all means to avoid placing them on mechanical ventilation because they don't do well but if you have to then you need to pay attention to the preload issue and the rv afterload issue again it's a tricky situation they're very difficult patient to deal with because they usually have signs of fluid overload but they are preload dependent and um, so again this patient may be difficult to manage for a, an internal medicine residence or a hospitalist or an internist and they almost always need um, um, a, a combination actually a team of um, pulmonary critical care and cardiology